The most watched. The most trusted. Eyewitness News. Everywhere you are. Time now for your forecast first on Eyewitness News, ABC 25. It's been a pretty average summer day. Temperature just above 90, lots of sunshine, a little humidity. And we've got a similar night to the past few on the way. We're 89 right now. We'll fall down into the upper 70s later this evening to overnight lows in the upper 60s to around 70. But it's going to get hotter and more humid before relief arrives later in the week. And my forecast next on Eyewitness News at 6. Tonight, an about face on mask recommendations. The CDC urging more Americans to cover up as COVID cases surge. A guilty plea entered. A Union County couple accepts a plea deal in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. And a crash in Vanderbilt County sends one to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Eyewitness News at 6 starts now. Live from the ABC 25 studio. This is Eyewitness News at 6. Well, the CDC reverses course when it comes to masking up indoors. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Shelley Kirk. Hello, I'm Brad Bird. CDC officials now recommend Americans wear masks indoors where COVID cases are surging, even if you're fully vaccinated. Well, health officials also recommend students and staff mask up inside schools regardless of their vaccination status. Eyewitness News' Katie Forcade has local reaction to today's announcement. It's a piece of news that has people nationwide talking, including elected officials. Be respectful of the disease, uh, exercise individual responsibility, that's the key. No more mandates and masking and things that didn't work from the get-go unless it makes common sense to do so. The news that the CDC is recommending masks be worn indoors again, even to those who are vaccinated. This news comes as the Delta variant makes its way through many communities across the tri-state. I'm fully with science. Uh, I am vaccinated, but I've heard that this Delta variant is pretty scary, pretty rough. If you get it. A spike in COVID cases across the tri-state leaves restaurant workers noticing a trend coming back. It's just in the last couple of days, there's more people coming in with masks on. Since there has not yet been an official federal or local mandate, officials at Comfort by the Cross-Side Cricket say they are currently not requiring masks inside. But they say if guidelines change, so will they. Whatever it takes not to shut the restaurants down. So if it's just requiring mask wearing, we're all for that. Many people say they just want things to return to normal. I just hope it blows over quickly and we can stay, you know, happy and healthy. In Evansville, Katie Forcade, Eyewitness News. Now, starting tomorrow, USI says it will require everyone to wear masks indoors on campus until further notice. Now, this includes everyone, whether they are vaccinated or not. Illinois state health officials say they also plan to fully adopt the new CDC guidelines in a statement. The state health director says until more people are vaccinated, we join the CDC in recommending everyone, regardless of vaccination status, wear a mask indoors in areas of substantial and high transmissions and in K through 12 schools. And in Western Kentucky, officials expressed concerns over the rise of COVID cases in several counties. Davis County is one of six counties in our area in the red zone with a rate of 35 cases per 100,000 people. Uh, several major events, including the Owensboro Air Show and Romp Festival, are scheduled to happen the next few months. Chris Jocelyn of the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, which organizes Romp, says they're plan planning with health officials, but believe the festival's outdoor setting can help prevent cases. There are things about an outdoor festival, that size, that, that just helps with physical distancing that, uh, that I think are to our advantage. I mean, Yellow Creek Park is a large space. Uh, Jocelyn also says there are currently no plans to cancel this year's edition of Romp Fest. And a reminder, uh, you can find the latest COVID-19 case numbers and information on vaccines at our website, tristatehomepage.com. A Union County couple pleads guilty to their roles in the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Lori and Thomas Vinson pleaded guilty to violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. 
They are scheduled to be sentenced October 22nd. The Bensons become the first tri-staters to plead guilty in connection with the insurrection. Cases against three others from the tri-state are still pending. Authorities identify a body which was found in Ohio County, Kentucky, nearly three years ago. Kentucky State Police say the body found in a wooded area near Rosine is that of Jamie Holland. She was found just off of Wilderness Lane in November of 2018, but was not formally reported missing to Ohio County Sheriff's deputies until the following year. Trooper Corey King says an investigation into her death has started, and that is considered suspicious at this time. Sad news at Ellis Park. One of its workers has passed away. Ellis announced on Facebook that Doris Heavy Watson died after crashing a tractor into a rail last Friday. Officials say he experienced a medical emergency. A cause of death has not yet been released. Watson had worked at Ellis Park for 20 years. Funeral arrangements are still pending. Two people are taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries after a crash today in northern Vandenberg County. Deputies were called to Highway 57 near Baseline Road around 1.30. Witnesses say a truck broke down, causing another semi to slow down. A young driver did not see the semi slowing down and ran into the back of it. The driver suffered a life-threatening injuries and another juvenile had serious injuries. No names have been released. And on the east side of Evansville, a semi overturned this afternoon, dumping a load of coal onto an exit ramp off the Lloyd Expressway. We're told the semi was driving too fast and overturned on the eastbound exit ramp of the Lloyd leading onto I-69 South. No serious injuries were reported. The state regulators changed the date and location for when customers can voice their opinions on Evansville's latest water rate hike request. The new date and location will be Thursday, August 12th at the University of Evansville at 6 p.m. State regulators had previously scheduled the hearing for August 4th at USI, but that hearing has now been canceled. The city is proposing a 36% water rate hike over five years to help pay for a new $177 million water treatment plant. Well, Chief Meteorologist Wayne Hart joins us now. We are on our way to a heat wave. Yeah, day four today. We'll make it five in a row tomorrow in the 90s. So that will be our first heat wave of the season. But the really hot weather will be day six on Thursday when a heat advisory will be possible for the tri-state. But relief is still on the way. Today, we actually started out a degree below the average at 68, 92 the high this afternoon. But I'll have an update on how much hotter it will get. And then the relief with a little rain for the weekend. And my forecast next when I Witness News at 6 continues.